Woo! Damn, that's such an abrupt ending right there. Welcome to welcome to Wednesday, Dave Matthews chat. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ashley, what, what's going on with that? Um, welcome everyone. It's Metal Wednesday, last Wednesday of the month. Hope everyone had a great April. I didn't. Metal Wednesday is the best Wednesday, by the way, because Wednesdays usually suck, but Metal Wednesday is the best Wednesday, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I apologize in advance for my redness. I was outside for three minutes today. <laughs> so I have uh, skin cancer, so I apologize to everyone in advance. Man, what the f Did you put like tanning oil on and not sunscreen? No. I have to go outside in like a Muslim like woman's burqa. I, I cannot be in the sun. You gotta wear. We gotta put one of those masks on. The masks on behind you. <laughs> it should. Next time I go out, I'll be like wearing a Slipknot mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's so bad being out. My outside. God, Jesus! Did you like drive past the sun? No, I had I had lunch today with um, a couple agents, and we're outside, and I was like, uh oh, I got some skin cancer brewing on my face. Then I'll probably it'll turn tan eventually. Just your forehead. My five head, you mean? Sorry, your five Jesus. head. Jesus. Yeah. So, well, I have a, uh, a life-changing event happened about a week ago. Maybe we'll get into the fun stuff in a minute, folks. But a life-changing event happened about a little over a week ago. Yeah? Yes. Am I pretty uh, life-changing event? I put in a bidet <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> in one of the bathrooms in my house. Uh, and... Um, yeah, I'm about to put one in Jeannie's bathroom now, in the bedroom, the master bedroom. Can't wait. Life changing, I'll tell you. And so when you wash your face with it, how's it been? Well, when I tested it, I didn't realize, like, because, <laughs> so before I even sat down with it, I couldn't wait to go to the bathroom to use the bathroom, by the way. <laughs> so, and Jeannie saw this happen, by the way. She's in the chat. She saw this happen. I'm like, oh, you know, the, the, when you sit down, like there's a the dial on your right hand side towards the back. Yeah, there it is. So, <laughs> well, we want metal Wednesday. Well, the the hand the knob is metal, so it's close enough. Well, the, I'm in front of it. I'm like, oh, this, let's see if this works. So I switched it on, and it shot, hit my shoulder, and went over my shoulder, and got the window and the and the or the window, the mirror and the wall wet behind me. I was like, well, I guess it works now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was Man. great. It was great. So have you, did you turn down the pressure at all or just using a full No, there's, there's material? a pressure, like there's a dial. So you can either, you know, uh, like very gently clean it or you can sandblast it if you want, you know. And then uh, I told Ellie it was a water fountain. So, uh, you know, so, so you've been, get out of there. So, so let's get a little personal now. When you go and rock a bidet, are you going sandblasted or are you going like nice and gentle? I th you're a sandblasted type of guy. No, I start off. I start off nice and easy, um, and then you know, you if I feel it. like I need it, you know, then I then I get the pressure and I wiggle because the I can't believe the aim on this thing. It's like it's crazy. The aim is like spot on. You know, it's like oh, that's right in there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're live. Welcome everyone to uh, Jay's B Hole Bonanza. Brought Jay's, to you no, by Jay's Jay clean, clean B Hole Bonanza. Clean B Hole Bonanza. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, again, welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in on your busy, busy Wednesdays because I know everyone here has a lot going on, as always. 
So uh, thank you very much for checking in. Um, Johnny, when you have a moment, can you bring on these producers of said show? Thank you. Executive producers. The executive producers tonight brought to you by the following. Mean Chuck Green, Wayno, <laughs> Joe Christian, Michael B., Thomas Santiago, Music Therapy Laz, Straight Tom, The Chad, James Gum, David Shea Gamori, The Captain, the Michael Captain, Smith. The Michael Smith, The Captain. <laughs> Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Can you hear that too? Yeah. Johnny does he's, have to tag in. He's frozen. I see him. He's oh, just, no. His face is frozen. Too much Brazzers download queue. Where Dan was Halen, he? John Moronic, <laughs> Jimmy Ray Hawkins, Mike Meese, Steve Carmichael. Steve Carmichael. That's the top tier of channel membership here on Johnny Bean TV on YouTube. You can become a channel member by clicking the join button below where we're currently, uh, uh, what, how many thumbs do we have? It's below the thumbs up button. We got 15, 15,000 thumbs ups. Thanks. Everybody. So 34,000 watching. That's, that's outstanding. Leave, leave, leave a thumbs up. Yeah. See, he's, <laughs> <laughs> let's see if we can, wait, wait, go, get oh, both. Oh, he's oh, he left. Oh, he just left. He's going to. It's just you know. <laughs> Man, I wonder if his son's downloading something he shouldn't be downloading. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let me change my setting real quick so it's not just you, because I have it on audio avatars. There we are. Wow. My camera's not even hooked up though. So, oh, here he is. Here you go. Hey. Damn internet. Yeah, I thought you got. I thought you got like, oh, they installed the the same internet they have on the space station here, and you know, we did. We won super duper, and apparently, super duper blows. <laughs> My apologies, everyone. Jeez. So, where do we leave off? Uh, are we talking about your uh, chode region, or are we going back to the bee hole right now? No, we're we're going to talk about. Um, we got done with the channel members because uh, you just left. You just up and left, and you just walked, took off in the middle of, of talking about the channel members. So we finished those. So now we're going to get into a little bit of news, and then we're and then we're going to do a roll call in a bit. Everybody, tell us where you are in your house, living room, dining room, bathroom, um, or where you live, whatever. Uh, and we'll get to a roll call in a few minutes, but. Everybody say hello to everybody. How about that? Check in. It's like uh, when you're at church, you know, peace be with you. Just go around, say hi to everyone, you know. Just but just don't shake up. hands. Just bump chests. <laughs> Slap asses, you know. That's what we do in my church. We just go chest to chest. It's great. <laughs> so what's on the uh I haven't been to church either. <laughs> oh no, you're you're gonna it's gonna be me solo tonight, I can tell. You son of a no. bitch. <laughs> Um, no. What's on the docket for What's on the docket for tonight, Brian? Um, as long as everything works properly, um, we're going to talk about. I have a new guitar here. You should have another new guitar, but you don't because FedEx, I think, lost it. And I've had a guitar waiting for ten months. Hopefully, that will arrive. It's supposed to be here today. I've been waiting ten damn. Months. Ten months. Ten months, bro. You're right. It's been ten months. Put the order you wait, in. You can wait another ten months because uh I don't know what happened to it. Wow, oh, sucks. So um yeah, we'll talk about some guitars. We're gonna talk a little gizmachi. Um, and then we have our monthly topic. But I'll be keep looking out the window for a FedEx truck to pull up because I know it's gonna come. You know, it's positive affirmation, so it, it's definitely gonna be coming. Well, I'm gonna, I'm the, I'm the negative on this one. It's not coming. You're gonna get either a phone call or an email or something, or I'm gonna get a call tomorrow saying that the package is damaged or, uh, you know, too much pressure on the bidet. <laughs> and I also received today in the mail something from vendor, uh, like a little, little receipt, if I may. And I still don't have. The Fucking guitar. Oh, you, at least you got the receipt, right? Oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> God. You just play that. 
Let's play that. I have my new strings I was looking to show off and chat about and what I'm going to do. Hell yeah. Man. What a Hell bummer. Yeah. But um, let, let's start with uh, what's really important, Gizmachi. I'm sure that's what everybody wants to talk about. <laughs> Everyone here. We have uh, 3,000 people here looking for Gizmachi information as we speak. So, Jay, what's going on in the world of Gizmachi? Um, should I should I say that I've I'm, I've uh I was supposed to do a cameo about a week ago and I haven't done it yet. Are you still in it? No, at WSOU. Um, for those of you who don't know, that's a radio station, a college radio station in uh the New Jersey area that is pretty damn big, uh, pretty important metal radio station, and um. <sighs> Somebody won. They had a contest for like a personalized, like a cameo video. And of course, for some reason, I'm always the one that's uh, chosen to do these things. And um, I haven't done it. I got the winner's name and everything. I want to do something special. I just don't want to go, hey, thanks for being a fan. That You won the contest. Cool. I want to play a little guitar on it and, and you know, maybe show them a, <laughs> show them a little skin. <laughs> Hey, this is how my bidet works. Check it, you know. Um, <laughs> all right, Ashley Moore, we got a question. I have to answer this. I have to answer this. This is important. Kiesel versus Music Man versus Sir. Kiesel sucks. Sucks. Um, Sir, I've heard, are the best guitars on the planet as far as, uh, you know, that stuff goes. I've uh, never – I've played one one time, and it was great. But uh, Sir Guitars, I've really not heard anything negative. Um, I had a couple Music Man John Petrucci's that wouldn't stay in tune. So mm -hmm. I sent them back. B. But Kiesel uh, are shit. That's my... Uh, and it's not an opinion either. That's that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Ash. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I think that was question. really from Ashley. I think that was from uh, her husband, Matt. Oh, okay. Well, whoever. But it's cool. Um, all right, so keep talking about the bidet and your uh, cameo on bidet. Yeah, so I gotta I gotta get that done. Um, but yeah, we have a new single coming out May fourteenth uh, with a video that's hopefully dropping the same day. No, 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 it's dropping the same day. Hey, don't tell me. I'm not. I'm not doing. I'm not doing the editing. Don't tell me that. Well, there's some someone downstairs. <laughs> who better get his ass to work. Oh shit! Was well, anything else going on with Gizmachi besides the CDs not uh coming yet? Um, so I emailed today, as uh, when we spoke earlier. Today rhymes with bidet. <laughs> today and bidet. I feel like it's like Pee Wee's Playhouse, right? We say bidet, everyone goes crazy. Ah! <laughs> so yeah, I emailed. Uh, well, hold on. Give give the bill. Give the uh the start of it first, because nobody really knows why the seat, you know, what's going on. I, I don't mind, I don't mind sharing this information. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> if you guys don't know, um, I've been doing a lot with, uh, Jay and the band and helping out with getting things taken care of, you know? Uh, so like I'm helping out, um, our friend Mike balls, getting the CDs taken care of. So I don't know, what, a couple months ago, mm -hmm. I, I don't have my computer with me, but it was a couple months ago. Uh, Balls and I were working on this and I'm dropping picks all over the place. And we were told that it wouldn't take very long once the uh, we finalize the proofs, make sure everything is good. It would take approximately two weeks to have the CDs. Like if anybody's seen Total Recall, two weeks, you know, that scene. <laughs> two weeks, well, it, it's, it's going to hell like that scene ended up going to hell. So. Right. So um, we're like, all right, cool pay the deposit. We're all set. Everything's taken care of. Got the proofs. We said it's a go. That's about, you know, five weeks ago already, five, almost six. And then it was a couple weeks ago. I reached out cause I don't want to be an ass. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? Just checking in. He's like, yeah, we got a, a tentative date of May 4th. And I was like, that's not what you said. You said it would take two weeks. And this was approved like mid March, like before St. Patrick's day. <clears throat> and then, silence nothing mm -hmm. emailed again politely and just like hey just checking in um see if you can rush this get us an answer nothing no response 
I uh, emailed again today. Uh, Balls had a nice comment for the band earlier. <laughs> and um, nothing. Still nothing. Still nothing? No. So uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to give him tonight. If he doesn't respond, I'm going to California. <laughs> and we're going to have some issues. You're going to sandblast them with a bidet. <laughs> bidet sandblasting. So... <laughs> That's what's been going on. So anyone in the chat who's been waiting for a Gizmachi physical CD, I apologize because I'm going to put this on me. But it's been taking a while, and it's it's uh, it sucks. But we'll get it. We're getting it. Well, and there was, there was something that happened like a month or so ago with uh, – like I guess there was a piece of the artwork that um, – you know, we had the option to maybe resize something that maybe we wanted to change and there and wasn't he like uh oh yeah if, well if you want it resized it's going to take a little longer but if we're just going to go with how the artwork is which is fine how it is sure. it was just it was just a one minor thing like well what if we kind of resize or, or zoom out or zoom in on this one thing right and he's like well if you if you just go with how everything is now which was the original plan this it'll go, it'll go right in and, and it'll start getting printed and still nothing like we might we might as well have had you know redone that one thing but it's, oh man it's it's our luck dude that's what it is yeah you know yeah i don't know sharon if that was in regards to my internet or for the cds but uh, yes to both mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah both <laughs> but yeah it's um you know doing a lot with you guys on putting this album out it's really been an eye-opener on some aspects of the music industry and this is one of them. It's just, there's a lot to do with putting out an album. A lot. So, but it's been fun. It's been cool. Well, I'm just glad I'm not in charge of a lot of that stuff because I hate, you know, you, still, you realize, you know, the music industry is like, it's, uh, you know, I'd rather perform music or produce or engineer music. I don't want anything to do with, uh, you know, the behind the scenes crap. It's it's not fun. That's when it, that's when I get like discouraged and I'm like, screw this. I don't even want to, I don't even want to play guitar anymore because uh, it's a pain in the ass. Hey, Nightbot, thanks. Right on cue, the new Gizmachi album. Get it here. Thank not the physical Nightbot. copy yet, Nightbot. You <clears throat> bastard. But soon. Yeah. Hopefully next week, or in a few days. Or, but, no, or um, next year. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but it's um. You know, a lot of stuff we've been doing or like I've been working with um, Gizmachi has a great um, person that we use for press. Her name's Maria from Adrenaline. So she'll call me, she'll email me and we'll, we'll talk about different things. And one time we were discussing merch and she's like, oh, do you want um, Mark Morton's uh, phone number from Lamb of God? I'll give you his information and you can call him like, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't send it to me because I'm not going to talk to them about merch. I'm going to be talking to them like, can we work on Resurrection Man? I, I need to learn how to play that riff. So I was like, please, yeah. please send it to me. Yo, can you FaceTime me real quick? <laughs> how do you so, play that well, well, Yeah, I was like, I, I could be professional. I can for like 30 seconds, but then we're done. So <laughs> You got to be, man. <laughs> I know. No, it's been good. It's been a lot of fun. So yeah. new single out in a couple weeks. If um, Optimus Thrice can hear me, you better be working on that because that album or that uh, that video must be released simultaneously. You heard he'll, that? He'll he'll get on and he'll be fine. Yeah, no, he'll be fine. So, yeah. Um, do you want to talk about the song? On um, what the song, the single will be? Uh, Turn to dust is going to be the new single. Not that anybody in the chat knows what well, knows what that is, but it's was it track four or five? Track four. four. Track four. Track four. Which uh, I think it's one of those songs that really hit you. No, I'm joking. Um, it's one of those songs I think where if, like you hear it once and you're like, maybe it doesn't grab you by the baguettes yet. Even though I think it has one of the better choruses on the album, which you know, hopefully that uh, that catches on a little bit. But it's a very, I think it's a very cool song. It's a great song. Thanks. Well, real good song, and then. Um... I guess one other thing we could talk about is right now myself and our radio rep names Max. I've been working on pushing uh, another song 
to Octane on Sirius XM. So, so far, <laughs> we've been doing some work. I'm not going to say anything yet. I don't, but some, uh, I, don't, some I, don't have, I don't have a crickets button. But some positive strides going on with. Okay, well, that. that's cool. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, everybody, if, if, if we get a song on Octane, I'll, I'll be, we'll be big time. You, I'm, I won't, I'll, Brian will have to, Boner Jams will have to pay me to appear on Wednesdays from now. <laughs> <laughs> Jay will no, no longer be. If we get on Octane, that would be, uh, as, as the captain would say, killer, killer. And we got John Mancuda in the chat. What's up, man? So he says, if, if Kiesel made bidets, they would squirt hot sauce up your butt. I don't Speak, want that. Speaking of hot sauce off the butt, do you want to go through uh, the chat or a little roll call real quick? Oh, yeah, there? roll call. I apologize. We got a little ahead ourselves talking about bidets. All right. What? We got 47 watching on, on YouTube and probably one or 2,000 on, on Facebook. <laughs> Everybody say hello real quick because there's not enough people I'm seeing as a participant in the chat. This is bull crap. <laughs> Everybody at least say hi. Just say hi or something else. Or if you like or or type a number from 1 to 10 on the level of redness on Brian's head. Everybody just write a 10. <laughs> How close am I to skin cancer right now? Go. <laughs> You're going to wake up with it tomorrow. Straight melon. Like all those chocolate cashews that I ate. I'm going to wake up with diabetes tomorrow. <laughs> um, so we got seven over eight in the chat. It's nice of me to show up. What up? Amanda Coombs, Andrew Saviors, Ashley Moore, Basement Guitar Guy, Brendan Buttcheeks, my buddy, uh, Frank Corcoran, Janice Lala, Johnny Bean is here, everybody. Hey now. Hey What's up, Johnny? Know. Oh, we got John Mancuda. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Michael Carver, uh, Mr. Hellstorm74. Nightbot, who's always here. What up, Nightbot? our most dedicated uh, viewer. What's going on? Ro Robot Death Metal. Thanks for coming by. Robot <laughs> Master Switch. Steve Steve Carmichael is here. <laughs> Steven Franklin. Tom Lorino is here. Mike Ball's brother. Thank you for coming, uh, showing up, Tom. What's up, Tom? Thrash Metal and Fun Riffs and Vistalite 1972. And everybody else that's lingering in the background. We appreciate you uh, spending your busy Wednesday with us on Johnny Bean channel. And everybody, yeah. hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. We're about 20 minutes into the show. Hit the join button below, right? Why not? Join. Help Johnny out. Help the channel out. There we go. Ben Tom loves Vagina. Hey. Up, Gina? Gina lives in Virginia, I see. Virginia Gina. My lights just turned on and turned green. Well, if you if you type Vagina, it should they should <laughs> turn pink, shouldn't they? Yeah, what what's what's that a dollar amount? Thank you, Tom. Six ninety nine. Nice. Also, uh <laughs> Janice Lala is here. Didn't I say that? Oh, she said she'll be back shortly. So she's she came and now she's leaving. Amanda Coombs. I saw Hi, Caleb uh, Rappaport, a.k.a. Nerd Halen. Nerd Halen. <laughs> so, uh, Johnny, one time I was saying that maybe one sometime in June, July, some point, we should just switch up shows. Like have, you know, uh, you know, I'll be on with you and Mancuda and Neanderball does Metal Wednesday with Jay. We should just like switch it up, do something different, you know? It would be a good time. Mancuda and yeah, I go yeah. like shirtless drinking bangs it'll be crazy <laughs> banging bangs yeah i even said man cool last night that new strawberry bang <sighs> oh that's right you were yeah you told me you were drinking it today and i was like i think that's the one man Kuda was drinking a couple weeks ago the new strawberry uh <laughs> virginia gina <laughs> flavor <laughs> <laughs> it's good and then uh tom Lorino, this is my my new axe Oh, we're going to do a drum roll. Hold on a second. No, no, we'll get a little bit. I just want to show them real fast, but I just oh, want okay. right. to see it. Just a little, little taste, a little appetite. So you want to show them before you, you want to show it before you show it. Yeah. Cause, cause oh. you never know. I might have another guitar tonight too. No, you won't. 
Yeah. So, as we got Tom, seven string, good times. Right now, I have this tuned to A. A. Playing, playing a little. You have it. You have a tune to Canadian. You have a tune to A. To A. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get to a little more. All right, so what do we got tonight? Um, I don't even really want to talk about my guitar right now because I'm a little hurt since my other one's still not here. No, I said, what do we got? What what's what's next on on the docket? We did the gizmachi. We talked about the bidet. So, um, well, I guess we can get to our monthly topic. You remember what that topic was? I sent it to you. I asked you to prepare. No, well, I, I told you I had an interview to do today at seven. And uh, oh, and by the way, everyone, I'm gonna cut you off. Shut up, real quick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was Jay's birthday, so in the chat, please make sure you say happy birthday to Jay on his 32nd birthday. So everyone, reach out, say hi, send him love. So Jay was busy recuperating from his birthday, so I'll let it slide. The problem with telling everybody that you're younger than you are is they'll be like, damn, he looks old for 32, well, you know? So I'll tell everybody I'm like 60, 52. How about that? 54. I'm 54. Um, which one? New metal news, new guitars, new undergarments. <laughs> um, top 10 albums. Oh, man. How am I going to come up with 10 albums in, in, in 10 seconds? That's what I'm saying. I'll just I'll just go off on a, and figure out what it's going to be. So tonight's topic will be the top ten albums of the two thousands. Oh man! So we that's we have twenty one years. Well, we have twenty years and four months. So we have a twenty years and a third, if I may, of new album releases that we can talk about. So I was even going to get into songs, but let's let's go over some albums. So go ahead, man. I thought you meant 2000s, meaning like 2000 to 2010. Wrong. You thought wrong. Oh. Like if, okay. So I have 21 years of out al- or 20 years of albums to go through in my head. Well, why don't you go through yours first? I will. Thanks for the birthday wishes, everybody. Um, I know there's a lot of people that posted on social media. And stuff like that. I appreciate. I didn't get to respond to everybody because uh, social media is the devil. But I appreciate it. Thank you very much. The devil. Definitely. So in the chat, I'm going to go over some some albums of the last 20 years and a, a third. Okay. Everyone chime in. Some of your favorite albums that's come out in the last 20 years. Um, so I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna go slowly with this because I'm gonna give you some ideas. Maybe you're like, oh yeah, that's that's a good call. So let me let me pull this up. <laughs> pull this up. All right. So can you hear Killian going bananas down there? By the way, is it? I, I can. Okay. Is uh, is his right. uncle rattling him up or? Um, I don't know. All right, number ten. Seven Dust Animosity. I know you you actually like that album. What year did that come out? Album, Seven Dust. What year? 2001. Oh, yeah, the then year it would 2001. be on my list. So it would be on my list then. Okay. Yeah, you, that's, that's, you that's, like that that's, album in a lot. my opinion, their best album. Your internet is shit right now. Sorry. sorry. Maybe I sorry. should go first and just, and just make up albums. Sorry. Um... <laughs> I can smell that. All right. You, you do that real quick. I'll, I'll be rate B. All right. Oh, shit. Johnny, you want to help out and name the top 10 al- metal albums? <laughs> I Let's don't know see. any of them. Let me just think off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> man, I know there's going to be a Mashuga album in there somewhere. Uh, nothing from Mashuga that came out in 2002, I believe. 2002. Oh, yeah, we got some Byzantine. Every Byzantine album that's come out since then. <laughs> the ones that you worked on or even the ones with that? Oh, yeah, only the ones that I worked on. <laughs> uh, go ahead. All right, so number 10, Animosity by Seven Dust. Great album. 
from yes. the front to back. There's no weak songs on that. It's really. I feel like when it gets towards the end, it gets a little like the first. I think it's like seven songs or something. Or like, hold on, let me pull it up. Let me pull it out. Let me do it. All right. Um, first song, "Tits on a Board." How can you not lead all so an album off with "Tits on a Board"? That's a great name for a song. That's a good one. Good song. Yeah. yeah. Uh, praise. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. That, that um that part in the middle when it gets all like quiet and then it kicks back in, so good. Trust, one of the best seven dog uh, seven dust songs ever. Crucified, great song. Yep. That's 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 a that's a good one. But um, if you go down like like to the end, like beautiful, redefine. Probably the worst song on the album is Angel Sun, and that's the last song. Yeah, see, the last song, that's one thing I can't stand. The last song of a record, in my opinion, should be like either if you're a metal band, you either go out guns ablaze and like Metallica used to. Um, I mean, Damage Incorporated, for instance. Like, holy crap. You go out on that, you're like, <laughs> holy shit. Yeah. Um, or you go out like Pantera on uh, like, you know, their one of their heaviest albums. Uh, which one they're all heavy well um, Love vulgar hollow no no um, Sam Blessed skin southern no, what, what's the the third album oh uh, far beyond driven with far beyond driven. driven you do like a cover of care of a uh, planet caravan which is very cool to do um but i don't know man when like that seven dust album kind of irks me because like the last like i said the last couple songs to me are just like i i turn off the album you know, so. But you would have put that in your top ten. I th I might. I don't know. It's tough, man. I might though. Like that. That's a great album. It is. That's. I think that's the best Seven Dust album in my opinion. I agree. I think it's your strongest. Yeah. Um. So that's my that's my number ten album. Let me pull up number nine. Uh. Next is uh Lamb of God, Ashes of the Wake. Yes, give it to me. That album's fantastic. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. It is. I would have. Uh, are there any other Lamb of God albums on your list? No. Okay. I would have chose. Uh, man, would I have chosen Wrath over that? Maybe it's because Josh was the one who recorded and produced it. But sonically, Wrath is like one of the probably one of the best metal albums overall. The sound of that album is like Jesus Christ. It's ridiculous. Go ahead. I'm sorry. To, yeah. No, it's all right. But um, yeah, that that's a really good album. That's front to back, fantastic. I'm just looking in the chat to see what what else we have here. Um, Jimmy Ray Hawkins also said uh, Lamb of God, and then um, Ashley, Event Sevenfold. That's on my list. Is that my next my next one? It is. Nice call, Ash. Uh, A7X, Waking the Fallen. Absolutely. That's a awesome. No, So number one, Waking the Fallen. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that album? Um, We saw them at the Chance in Poughkeepsie on that tour. And there was like 20-something, 30-something people there. It yeah. was it was like a ghost town, eh? It was crazy. Did um, you say it was a ghost town, eh? Yeah. <laughs> the line from from Strange Brew, but uh, it was nuts. You know, when you think back to like how big they ended up getting, literally a short time from then. Um, man, yeah, that album, that album's is uh, like I said, as the captain would say, killer. Yeah, like Unholy Confessions, the real first song on that album. Yeah, so I don't know the names of a lot of these songs because at the time they were like iPod albums. You just put them in your iPod, and you don't right. don't even look at anything. You just play it. Um, let, let me let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Well, you don't have to because I'm not going to know the names of any of the songs. So you're just going to – you can tell me the songs are named, uh, you know, Flip Flop. I'll sing and, them for you. you know, and I'll sing them <laughs> Sand Blasted the day. <laughs> no, um, so the second song, um, you know, the uh, Unholy Confessions. That -na 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 -na, like it's – and then the <laughs> yeah. um, so that song that goes into chapter four, 
up. Yeah, I don't really. know. Any, I don't know the names of any of these shits. Oh, that's good. Um, oh, Rory's in here. What's up, Rock? Hi, Daddy. It's me, Rory. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Can she hear you, or can I hear you? I said, "Did you hear me?" Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I said hi, Rocktober. Oh, okay. Everyone has. So up. she's hogging up all the bandwidth. That's why your internet. It's true. <laughs> um. Thomas now look Rankin. at your forehead in that picture. It's uh. You look like, you're, you, look like you have a uh, a shaved head in that picture. My my forehead is massive. <laughs> It really is. I don't mean to laugh, but it's an entity onto its own. It's it's not small, you know. Well, it's just the big brain you got in there. It's pulling your pulling your your scalp up. Not you see, that's the thing. Everyone, you know, Brian, you probably think my my for my hair is receding. It's not. Your brain is so big that it's actually just pulling your your skull up. That's why your your forehead looks so big. Oh, okay. Look at the big brain on Brian. It's, it's big cranium. <laughs> There's something wrong with your Abdullah Oblingata. So. <laughs> um, I think Brian wants to quit. He's going <laughs> to <gonna> kill me. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I remember when I was in uh, high school, and there was this girl I went to school with, and I called her Distinta. She had like such a monster forehead, like she hasn't like gone through, um, like the evolution. Her, her forehead's so big, and then like mine is caught up to her, so I really can't say anything anymore. So why Distinta? Why Distinta? Yeah, you know the movie theater. Like you can yeah. watch a movie on her face. Oh my god! <laughs> Super nice. I had some great, uh, <laughs> great nicknames for people back in the day. <laughs> Wow. Okay. What's next? What are we at? Seven? Um, yeah. So event sevenfold. Next, Trivium Shogun. And I actually started getting into Trivium after I saw them with you guys. <laughs> and um, that album came out, I think it was after OzFest when you guys toured together. So that was 05. So trivia, um, Shogun, I think was 07, I believe, 07, 08. I think so. I know it's right in that uh, genital time period. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, but that's a really good album. The first song, Filthy. What's your, uh, what's your thoughts from like touring with, tri uh, with Trivium and what they do and what, what's your, what do you think? You trying to get me in trouble here? No, no, like no. musically. I like Corey. Yeah. What do you think about his guitar playing and what he's done? I think Corey's phenomenal. I think he's uh him and I got along very well on Ozfest. Um and uh man, if we have, if we were in a private conversation right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can we pretend we're we're not live and I can unload, but I'm not gonna. Yeah, it was go ahead. Long, it, was, it, was long, it was a long. They're not gonna be on any of my top ten lists, but um, it was a long. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Optimus Rice, what's your thoughts on uh, Shogun? I, I think Jimmy he's... Jimmy loves trivia. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And uh, chat, what do you think? What do you think of trivia? Thoughts? I think uh, Matt is very a very talented. Uh, not only singer, but um, guitar player, songwriter, everything. Um, you know, don't don't ask me about the don't ask me about the bass player. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll move on then. <laughs> yep. But uh, Shogun's a real good album. If you guys have not listened to it and you want to listen to it, go check it out. It's it's really good. I I'm a big fan. Check it out. Number six. Jay Hannon's favorite album of the last 20 years, Deftones White Pony. Love, love me some Chino. Love you, Chino. You, I miss you so much, Chino. Um, that's a great album. Yeah, how are you? I know, I know you're a big fan of the first two albums, right? Adrenaline, Around the Fur. 
Yeah, adrenaline is where it's at. Um, around the fur is is really really good. Mm-hmm. Um, sonically, I mean, the drums on on that album, even even on White Pony, the drums, you know, amazing. And White Pony has a couple songs, but I think to me it was kind of um, you know Chino's voice kind of started that whole airy whiny, <sighs> like all that stuff really really started big time. For him or for other bands? On White Pony. No, I'm talking about them. Oh, okay. Like I wanted to like White Pony a lot, but I just for some reason it just didn't couldn't didn't do it for me. The song uh was it uh what's the song with uh Maynard from Tool? Passenger? That song is is the Shinsis. I like that song a lot. <laughs> the Shinsis? The Shinsis, yeah. <laughs> um but I mean there's a couple songs on that album I like, but I it's not one of those albums where I can put it on and not skip songs. Like mm-hmm. I'll maybe take a few off, like, you know, the best thing about like Spotify and these type of musical music platforms now, streaming platforms is like making playlists because, you know, back in the day with cassettes, you wanted to skip a song, you got to fast forward it and then you, you go past it and you're like, ah, shit, now I got to rewind it. And then CDs, you know, it was easy to skip, but it was still kind of a pain in the ass, you know, when you had to like, if you wanted to program CDs or if you wanted to listen to an album when you went to bed. And then there's a song you really hate and you don't want to hear it while you're sleeping. So you had to program all that crap. But, you know, you go on Spotify now and you pull up an album that you love and there's like one song you don't like on it. All you got to do is hit the three dots and go to hide song and it doesn't play it. It skips right past it. It's the best. I love it. Yeah. Well, that um, White Pony has my favorite Deftone song ever and it's tough for me to pick one song from a band but korea korea the ninth song on that so good huh. i'll have to peep it it's it's real good so everyone in the chat let me know what you think uh brendan butt cheeks please when you get a chance email johnny your address i have to send you a boner jam shirt so please Email send, him, you know. No, just send. I, I might have his address, but if uh, Brendan text me your address, and I'll have Brian send you one. We, we're good. Yeah. We're good like that. Yeah. Uh, Brendan Butchkeeks, hopefully, is my connection to getting my original Ibanez RG seven sixty back. So hopefully that still happens. Really? Somewhere, somewhere down the road. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me about it. Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, no, well, Brendan and I worked together at a, I don't want to say together at IBM. Like he was an engineer. I was just the Joe Schmo, you know, pushing buttons on computers and shit. But um, there was a, a coworker of mine um, that when I started playing like seven string guitars, I literally never touched that six string again. It was just like sitting under my bed in the case, you know? Right. And stupidly, one day at this, I don't want to say his name on here, but one day he, he said something about him wanting to start playing guitar. And I was like, you know, he, the, the, the dude we're talking about, he was cool as hell. He was, you know, around the same age and stuff. And uh, I was like, well, I have this awesome Ibanez that I don't play anymore. You know, it's like a, probably at the time it was probably like a 12 to, you know, $1,200 guitar. I was like, I think I sold it to him for like 500 bucks or something. And uh, I regret it to this day. I want it back. God, I want it back. <laughs> you know, but it was it was awesome. And plus, it's like the guitar that I learned the most on, you know, right. like when I got that seven string or that's that six string Ibanez, it was like, you know, I started to uh, really kind of hit my stride as as a guitar player. You know, gotcha. Whose mask is that behind you, Jay Hannon's? Which um... yeah. <laughs> Brian makes me wear those when we're in bed together all night. So, uh, <laughs> which uh, which mask? Uh, well, we'll start with the one on the left. That's Clown from Slipknot. That's from. And these are actual. These aren't like you know hot topic masks. Everybody, these are actual like worn masks. Mm-hmm. Stage worn masks from the band. Yep. And don't so ask we, him how he got them. 
so this one here, mm, I feel like a weatherman. This one, yeah, that's from Clown from Slipknot from 0.5, the gray chapter. So uh, that's one of his masks. And then the next one, here, that is Corey Taylor's mask. There, there's a picture up there. Um, that's from what the All Hope is Gone, the fourth album, the, the mask. And the one on the right is a concert worn uh, clown mask. Well, there's light is in the way. Hold on. Just throw it and throw it down. Uh, anyway, I'll try to block it from here. No, 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 no. Okay. Anyway, uh, that vi- that mask was actually worn in download, I think, 2009. And that was the mask that was worn in the sulfur video. So that's mine. It's got, it's got uh, clown's beard hair in it. It's got uh, it's not his beard hair. No, I'm joking. It's got his genitalia love in there. It's awesome. I wear it a lot. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> once I got it, I, I, uh, you smell it. Yeah. And I have one other one, which, uh, I should grab for everyone's viewing pleasure. So I was going to hang it up there and I just haven't done it because I'm not very handy and I don't want to screw it up, but I'll, I'll bring it up. I'll show everyone shortly during our intermission. I'll do it. So anyway, my aunt, Pat, my aunt Patsy's in here. What's up, Aunt Patsy? Yeah. Brian, Brian's got the Chernobyl stunt double makeup on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's up, Jimmy? What up? You're looking slim and handsome as always. Opposite of that. <laughs> I had Chick-fil-A three times in the past two days. You did what the past three days? Chick-fil-A. Uh, have you used the bidet yet? Uh, just to drink out of. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the chat, say hello to Jay's brother-in-law, Jimmy Optimus Thrace Hatcher, What's a.k.a. It? the drummer of Gizmachi. Also I tried to get this a-hole to do the – I had an interview at 7 p.m. tonight, Eastern. It's like, hey, Jim, you're going to be here. Do you want to do the interview? I don't want to be on that, man. I don't talk about that crap. And meanwhile, <laughs> he comes up and standing standing next to me like <laughs> – Did uh, – Jimmy, were you, did you hear me talking about you downstairs earlier? No, I did not. Why, no. Was it bad, I hope? It was, we were talking about the band, how uh, you'll have the, um, the video done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it got real hot. <laughs> so it's Damn. Downstairs, like 88 degrees. Yeah, it got then, real hot I, coming up. Yeah. And everyone in the chat, if uh, you see Jimmy's beard, you want to help out his beard oil, please drop a super chat for us. We'll make sure the proceeds go to Jimmy promptly. <laughs> you, you could probably rub some oil on that forehead. And, uh, <laughs> Can you come over and do it for me? Yeah. Testicular oil. <laughs> <We're> not- <laughs> I got. I got to turn the air on up here again. Hold on. I'll be right. I got to hold on. All right. So uh, if you guys hey, haven't noticed, the heat's on like eighty-eight down there. Like we can still hear you, which is great. Oh, yeah, we can still hear us. So everyone in the chat, as you're uh, you're checking this out, Jimmy, Jay, and I are uh, have been pretty close for a while. Jimmy, since we were young. Shirts off. How young? Super young. And uh, yeah, Jim Jimmy's uh just goes way back to like two weeks ago. We're we're, we're pretty tight. So. That's thirty dollars I respect. Can you hear him back there? I didn't hear what he said, but I know okay, it was like, vile and terrible. Probably. Does Jay share the kernels? Yeah. I give you uh popcorn and stuff. So Jimmy, while while you're up here, let me ask: You have uh, some? What's some of your favorite albums of the 2000s, from 2000 yeah, to uh, now? Like Y2K? Or yes, the last. No, not not Queens, right? Y2K, your Q2K, that hunk uh, of crap. 2000. Yeah, the past 20 years. Sworn to a great divide from soil work. Sworn to a great divide from soil work. Uh, archetype. Having the drama from soil work. Yeah. Archetype Who's the singer? Archetype, Archetype from Fear Factory. These are all on my list too. Now that I'm, now that I'm yeah. thinking about it, Jimmy, man, you you, you should take over for me. <laughs> um, shit. What's that? Um, oh my god. 
Jimmy, why don't you come a little closer so we can see your beautiful face? No, I don't want to. It's, 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 it's too hot. It's like 400 degrees. <laughs> well, just sit on his lap real quick. <laughs> Music Therapy Laz says, hey, Jimmy, you rock on the drums. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> He's Tom all right. Lorino, a life once lost, a great artist. Oh, we do, I mean, when did Chaos Fear come out again? 98. Oh, and nothing, I guess, counts, right? That was 99, though? Two, that was 2002. Oh, or, Jesus. That was, I guess that's on there. Yep. That's the one I listed so far. Um, well, what else do you got, Brian? Oh, oh yeah. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so what, what I leave off? Um, Trivium, Shogun, Deftones, White Pony. Jimmy, what's your thoughts on White Pony? <laughs> not, not, not a huge fan. Not a huge fan. No. Um, number five. Uh, you guys might know this album. Everyone in the chat. <laughs> Music therapy last. Thank you, Jimmy. We'll use that five dollars for his beard oil. <laughs> so thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, number five, Omega Clyde from Gizmachi. Number five. Number five. Big fan of the album. Number five. I know the drummer. <laughs> I know the drummer. I'll, I'll, t I'll take I'll take top five in the past twenty years. That's not a problem. In all seriousness, um, it's it's fantastic from front front to back, right? It's just there is no weak songs. Even though you guys num track number nine, you weren't a huge fan of, but that chorus in the song Bjorn did an amazing job on it. I listen to that song all the time now. When I go in the car, that's the first song I put on. I, I love it. Plus, like yeah. the, the guitar riff to the bridge. Oh uh, yeah, yes. You're you're gonna want to check your uh the latest text message that just came through, Brian. <laughs> you might go through the friggin' screen when you read it. Um, let's see. Any of the I guess what was uh what year did um Jesus Christ? Uh, what album came out before Stabbing the Drama? Um, is that live? Uh, figure number five. Uh, no. What what, what about? Oh, what, put that one too. That's a good one. What's before Figure Number Five? Uh, Born, um, Natural Born Chaos. Natural Born Chaos. That is that's. That was ninety nine. Damn, that was 99? Yeah. Crap. <laughs> Are you sure? I think it is. Look, Somebody look it up. John Biel. Music Therapy Lad says he has still not received his Boner Jam shirt yet, by the way. Uh-oh, is there some... Uh, oh, shit. Music Therapy Lad? 2002, so there we go. Don't worry, it's coming, Music Therapy Lad. I wanted to send them all out at the same time because I'm notorious for... I'll go once and I won't go again. So it's coming. Don't worry. I, I'm waiting for uh, two other addresses and it'll be on its way. So, but um, all right. So n number five. Yeah, Omega Clyde Gizmachi. Thank you. Love it. Number four. Iowa by Slipknot. That album is the shit. One of my favorite Slipknot songs of all time, Metabolic. One of the last tracks on the album. So good. That album is just... Blistering. Fucking heavy. There's, that's it. It's just fucking heavy. Jimmy, what's your thoughts on Iowa? Hurry up. Uh, it's pretty good. Not as good as the first album, in my opinion. Is that your favorite Slipknot album, the first album? Yeah, without a doubt. Okay. My favorite Slipknot album is Volume 3. Which that's also on my list. We haven't even got there yet. Yeah, volume three. Just maybe it's because that's the time period. Like we were. Well, the first time we heard Joey Jordan play drums was obviously, you know, I, oh, to me, that was that was the one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, number three, Leviathan. Number three. Leviathan by Macedon. Ooh, ooh! I fucking love that album. That's that's. That's that's my um, that's kind of like my uh, Great Southern Trend Kill of Macedon. Like I heard some stuff, but when um, oh, that's I, right, Trend Trend Kill. That's right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So I I just that, that you know Iron Tusk, Sea Beast. Those are some of the best Macedon songs ever written. They're amazing. Crack the sky. When did that come out? That was oh eight. That was. That's, that's that one's awesome. 
Crack Sky is fantastic. Yeah. I, um, I think Leviathan was no. Uh, Crack Sky was 2010. What's the um? I think there's only like one album from Mastodon that I I don't want to say dislike because that's not true. The one that came out, the, the Jonah Hex soundtrack one. I don't know. What was the one before? The one uh, that came out after Crack the Sky, The Hunter. Yeah. That one's eh. Yeah, I remember listening to that, getting all pumped up, and I was like, "This album's okay." Is that the one with Mother Love and I? No, no, that's one Surround the Sun or oh, something that, like that. That. Shit. that album's the shit. Yeah, that album's fantastic. Yep. Emperor Sands, amazing is uh, amazing as well. What's up, CK? This counts. Yeah, Johnny's probably listening to this, going, "I've I haven't heard of not even any of these bands or these albums." Like <laughs> these guys are like, "I'm on a different planet right now." So CK, yeah. we're going over the top. <laughs> yeah. speak, speak, Eng speak English. I don't know what you guys are saying. Oh, my phone's ringing. I got. Oh, it. oh get it. Hurry up. Um, CK, this countdown is the top ten albums of the last of the two thousands. So since two thousand to now, 2000. basically. <laughs> since two thousand. The year two thousand. Um, <laughs> oh, my mom's in the chat. Everyone say hi to my mom. What's up, mom? Hi, Brian's mom. Um, um Ma uh, Amanda says, "Got to go get the kid to bed. Have a good rest of the show. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Have a good night. The chloroform pillow works uh, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see what other um, albums we have here in the chat. Um, uh, who, who said I never understood the infatuation with Mastodon?" You know, I think part of the reason is because they sound so unique. Nobody sounds like them. Um, yeah. Well, that Killer Be Killed album sounded pretty. Yeah, good. but that is like that. Somebody from Mastodon is in it. That's a good album, though. Troy, uh, well, I'm just saying. Good. Somebody, so they have like kind of an excuse to sound like that. Sure. Yo, you guys sound like Mastodon, dude. I'm in Mastodon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do have a man crush on Bron Daler. I yeah. love me from Bron. Uh, Eternium. Awesome album. Dude, it's like if me and you put out a record. You guys sound like Kismachi too much. Well. What do we get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, let's, let's see what else we have here in the chat. Sorry, guys. I wasn't looking. I was more, more focused on my I was album. mowing the lawn. Yeah. yeah. It's, it is hard because once you came up here, I started like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Diablo. The Eternium. That was the shit. That's not as good as. Uh, it, it is. Icarus. Yeah, it's not. It is. Maiden or Priest is the best metal band ever. Who said that? I would choose Maiden. Um, even though, man, that the last uh, Judas Priest album that came out, what, 2000, 2000 and... Uh, 16, 17? Yeah, hmm. I think 2017. It's freaking badass, man. Is that Painkiller, that album? No. No. No, Judas Priest has some has some bangers, man. Firepower, thank you, butt cheeks. Yes, Dude. okay, that is Jay's son behind him, sitting there. He's a. Uh... <laughs> Somebody said, "Is that Jay's son behind him?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's if you were uh... my son. <laughs> then you'd be. That, I'd be married to my which is daughter. Legal. Which is legal down here. Yeah, it is kind of <laughs> it's right. actually encouraged there. Yeah, but um, no, uh, CK, that's uh, Jay's landscaper. He lets him in the house from time <laughs> to time after he finishes the month. <laughs> forehead oil massage. I let I, I let him cool off and, and dry before uh, I send him home. Yeah, he lets him cool off so he doesn't have a, like face glowing like me. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow, this show went off the rails quickly. So let's um, let's get back to the countdown. Uh, so, yeah, number three was Leviathan by Macedon. Number two, The Way of All Flesh, oh, yeah. Gojira. Best, their best sounding album. Their best oh, album. Yeah. yeah, it might be their best album, too. That That, that is some Toxic Garbage Island, Ouroboros, yes. and Vacuity. Vacuity just, that does it for me, man. I Like, that's there's nothing better for me. Oh, let me uh, just clean my pants real quick. What's up, Dimebag? Everyone there? <laughs> Dimebag. I'm waiting for the... <laughs> That's the, the friggin' cat puke. It's coming. 
He's looking around. He's mortified. Because he hears. He's like, I know that sound. He's a hypoallergenic cat, so he doesn't uh, – there's a so Devin put, Rex. So you put it <laughs> – never mind. What? <laughs> so you put him in like the uh, – put him in the trees outside and stuff. and He can't go outside. He's a pet dander all over him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor dime. Do you have like Benadryl on hand for the for the cat? Yeah. <laughs> And um, all right, so number two is the Wave All Flash Gojira, and number one, top album of the two thousands for me. Hold on, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. what year did it come out? Two thousand four. Is it, is it what I think it is? Yeah, it is. Just say it. Just go with your instincts. Pantera. Wrong. Oh, Slipknot. Yeah. Yes. Volume three, just the little okay. verses. All right. Three, you, you ever uh, try to play three nil on a guitar? No. That song is hard as hell. It's fast. Uh, it's, it's real good. I have not tried to play that. Thrash metal and fun riffs. We need some Slipknot covers. And if you're going to do one, do uh, try three nil. That's fun. And that, well, ladies and gentlemen, is my list. Well, there, let, me, let me give this. I mean, there might be one of them on there, where I go, but other than that, it was a pretty, it was a pretty good list. Um, <laughs> Tom Ball says, uh, "Extol, uh, the Blueprint Dives that came out in two thousand five. That is a kick ass album." He's right. Um, you got two yellow guitars. And hey, don't don't forget now we got a couple of Textures albums that came out in the two thousands. Well, that's one of the best ones. That uh, that are pretty killer. If anybody uh. You know, if there was another band that um, doesn't get the credit that they deserve as far as uh, their songs and the talent and just their music in general, it's textures. Because they, they, you know, kind of, I don't want to say broke up, but kind of called it quits a couple years ago. And it would be cool. That's one band that I would think of that would be a, a great tour. You oh. know, Gizmachi and Textures together would be like, hell yeah. I don't even know if they know who the hell we are, but. Nemec, they had a couple good ones. Nemec, yep. Mm -hmm. Good band. I know Mike Balls likes them a lot. They're really good. Um, yeah. Majestic PB and J Cat says Periphery. Guys, what's your thoughts on uh, Periphery? And uh... this is twice on tonight's show. You're you're putting me under the uh, <laughs> under the gun, you son of a bitch. <laughs> well, there's. I'll say it. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna say all I want to say, but there was a time in 2006 or five. What year would it have been, Jimmy? Uh, Probably 2006 or seven, when Jimmy had uh, wrist problems from doing too much of <laughs> oil. Yeah, um, Jimmy had a, a problem with his wrist, and he had to kind of get it worked out. We were looking for a drummer, and uh, you know, I went on to like the Meshuga forums when actually you know people went to bands' websites. Instead of like just, you know, social media. And I was, I put in like, you know, the, the music video for Wandering Eyes. And, um, and it was kind of like, you know, touring, signed touring band looking for a drummer, blah, 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 and gave all the information. And that dude from Periphery like commented, cause he was like one of the, I don't know if he was a moderator in, in one of those chat rooms or, but he was like all over it, you know? And he like commented and, and basically like just lit us up. And I was like, what? Like, what the hell is I mean, I knew who he was, you know, obviously a very talented dude, but it kind of like, like, why? Like, we're small potatoes and he's ripping us like in a, in a forum. And that kind of changed my entire uh, outlook on, um, on him and, and his band. And, uh, you know, I don't forget shit like that. They're old drummer. Freak show. Oh, they're yeah. I would never say anything negative about the talent. Super talented dudes. But I mean, when you come out and, and talk about a, a small band and basically rip them apart on a forum, you know, and to me, that's uh you know, I don't care how much I like you at the time or or how much whatever. That's it for me. Now I'm I'm starting to get hot, man. This was how many years ago? I'm over here. <laughs> hey, don't 
if you come any closer, I'm going to, it's going to combust. <laughs> Starting to feel like my face looks getting all pissed. Yeah. And <laughs> my shirt's going to burn off. Yeah. Um, no, there, there, that's, you know, I've said to you a lot, I'm always petrified of meeting like some of my idols or, you know, mus musicians I've listened to forever. Just because I'm afraid of them saying something or just doing something to just tarnish the way I feel. Like I wouldn't feel any different about their music, but I'd be like, fuck them. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, so I, I understand. So again, it's not a slight to their music, but if someone is shitting on you. No, but it, it made me not want to listen to them ever again. No. It, it. Like, you know, yeah. I was like, nope, never don't even want to hear them. Yeah, no, I totally understand. Um, Jimmy, you have any other, uh, any other bangers of the last, um, it's hard, man. It really is. Uh, Who's that Japanese guy I told you to listen to? Herman Lee. Takiyoshi Omohara. That guy's the shit. I think his album was like 2015. It's really good. A guitar. I don't know. Um, no idea. I forgot the name. The, it's made eighties. Oh, Skull Fist. Skull fist. Um, is that metal? Well, I guess it like is. Yeah. Metal, yeah. Is that brazzers or metal? <laughs> Skull fisting. What the hell's the name of that album? Waves of something. It's pretty good. Really good. Um, what's what's weird is I did it. Um, I, I I don't want to keep bringing this up, but the interview that I did tonight before this, I got asked that question like, what you know, what new bands or whatever have you been listening to? And I was like, Van Halen. No, yeah, well, yeah. It, it's, it was hard. I, and I said that thing. I was like, you know, I just turned 44, 54. Um, and I remember reading something a couple years ago. It said like at, at around the age 33, you stop seeking out new music to listen to or new newer bands to listen to. And you kind of listen to what you've listened to right. your whole life. Right. And, you know, and obviously if a band that you absolutely love comes out with a new album, you know, you're going to listen to it. but and I kind of feel like I'm in that category of people, you know, there are some new bands that are out, you know, metal stuff too, you know, that I'll listen to and I'll, I'll, I'll be like, this is cool, but it just doesn't have the same effect on me as it, as it, it used to, yeah. you know, right. and it doesn't, it's not, it's not taking anything away from those bands. Um, but it's just how it is. You know, it's, it's very difficult and everything. I was saying this too, that, you know, you go on Spotify, for instance, and you go like on the new release radar, or whatever it's called. And I'll skip through and it sucks because you don't give it your full attention. Like you listen to something, you put something on. And uh, if it doesn't like totally grab you by the cojones within 30 seconds, you either change the song or you like, eh, you go to the next band that's on that, on that list. And it's so flooded now where it's hard to really take one album and listen to it for like a couple days in a row or a couple weeks in a row. Like we used to, you know, I used to go out and buy a CD or a tape from my day and you know, you're spending your allowance on it or your, you know, money, you, you know, your paycheck, part of your paycheck, you got no choice but to listen to it. You know, it's not like you got sent home with a box of CDs. Like, Hey, you just go through and try to like something. No, you listen to it. Because you bought it, you spent your own money on it, and you have nothing else new to listen to. And it's a lot different now, you know. I remember when I bought the first Stained album. Mm -hmm. I bought that because they were with uh, Fred Durst. Yes. I bought it the same time as I bought the first Slipknot album. So I didn't really listen to it too much just because the first Slipknot album blew it away. But I did like it. It was, it was a pretty good album. Yeah, that first Stained album was good. But I, I, it's weird. I listen to that now. And it completely has a different effect on me now. It's like, you know, it's good. Don't get me wrong. But I don't want to, like, keep listening to it, you know? What's the first okay. Born of Osiris album? I don't know. Rain, great, great album. I don't know. Whitechapel, first album. I think it's self-titled, really good. Oh, the Vola album. Pause of a Distant Crowd, really good. The Volva album? Vola. Vola, yeah. <clears throat> um, CK says, at 33, you stop listening to new bands. I think that's that was, like, a, a study that somebody did. Um, they kind of like, you know, obviously polled a bunch of maybe older um, music fans. And I guess that was like the average of when people stop seeking out 
new bands to listen to. You you kind of have you don't listen to so much music in your lifetime. I mean, you know, but I don't know. I mean, there is some stuff that that hits me, but it's weird. I'll always kind of go back to what I've listened to for the past, you know, 30 years. <laughs> and it's still that that's the great thing about rock music. You know, like I mean, if you put something on that you listen to when you were 12 years old, and it still kind of has that same effect that it did back then. It kind of brings you back to that point in time. And that's the great thing about music. Right. Porno, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I, I know why this part's all worn out of the tape. That's true. Um, Michael Carver says, I'm 34 and still finding new bands every day. So that's awesome. I wish I, wish I was the same way, man. Necro Goblicon, uh, pretty good. Necro Goblicon. It sounds like a band from a movie that they just made up. They're awesome. What the Magic Spider song is Necro Goblicon. Oh, okay. What is Jay's take on the new Greta Van Fleet? I listened to a couple songs a couple years ago. I guess from their last album, and uh, I didn't like it one bit. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> didn't like it one bit. Uh, to to. Uh... Two questions or two, two things. Uh, Robot Master Switch. What did I miss? Or I, I know you, you love metal, and you, you and I chat a lot. Give me some albums that I missed. And also, Mom, you listened to a lot of '90s music when I was growing up. Most of it lousy. Like what? G give us some. Give me some bands, Mom. Like New Kids on the Block. What else we got? I thought I thought she was going to comment and say that she's worried about your forehead. She's always worried about my forehead. <laughs> my mom's like, don't go out in the sun. <laughs> 10 to 3, I shouldn't even be outside. <laughs> um, He's Paul Vampire. That's <laughs> true. Um, Violent, re uh, Violent Sleep of Reason. Jimmy, sure. what's your thought on that album? Uh, it was it was all right. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, you know, the direction they're going, I mean, they're still, you know, the pinnacle of you know metal but i'm more of a fan of uh destroyers improved like chaos fear type stuff <laughs> Ovel of Maya, another good band with the uh, 2000s ish 2000s oh uh, your mom's talking about nirvana they were, they were the 90s i think yeah that's that's the oh. music that uh that she had on yeah, yeah. I hated them until like after they were done. Yeah, I wasn't really a fan until like you said, yeah, until like years later. Yeah, I, I can go without listening to "Smells Like Teen Spirit" ever again. I've heard that song way too much. I love that song. You know what's funny about that? Because mm -hmm. um, I bought the uh, Unplugged, which was great. I thought the Nirvana Unplugged was really good. Um, and when you think about a band not playing, not even the biggest hit of their career but the biggest grunge like t smells like teen spirit might be the biggest song like one of the biggest songs i don't say ever but it was definitely one of the biggest songs of the 90s biggest grunge song ever oh definitely basically killed you know glam metal and and, and hair metal and metal and guitar solos and all that crap mm -hmm. but to think like they did uh and i know that song like how do you translate it from you know, because it is like their one of their heavier songs. How do you translate that to unplugged? So maybe that's part of the reason. But you know, it's just strange when you think about like a band not playing one of the biggest rock songs ever that completely changed the, the landscape of, of of heavy rock music. A band not playing it for one of their you know concerts or whatever. It's very strange. Yeah. Great. Because I'm sure somebody was like you guys aren't playing smells like teen spirit. Like what, what are you doing? Right. CK. Did Jay stop listening to new music at 30, 33, despite the fact he's a current musician himself. Boom. What does that, what does that have to do with anything? He's asking. I mean, there's, there's the Rolling Stones are in there. What? 112. Like how old are they now? I, I doubt. I doubt <laughs> they're still looking and trying to find new bands to listen to. Man, right. you know it. So it's different because I guess 
you know, I found out about Crazy Licks about four years ago. Um, and I love them. I, I actually listen to them like on rotation. Um, a band like Heat, which is kind of the same type of thing. Like they're kind of, they have that old school, like 80s vibe to them. Um, so there are a few bands, but not, I, as far as extreme or, or heavy metal, it is very rare that I'll uh, I'll listen to something like a newer heavy metal band. It's usually a band that's playing older styles of music. What did you, yeah. did you listen to that new Gojira song I sent? No, sweet. What do you think, Jimmy? It's the, uh, I like. I mean, it's not as good as the other three I heard personally. Okay. Well, the drumming is a little subdued on it. It's, it's like weird. Chanting. What song are you talking about? The chant or into yeah, the storm? What are you talking about? The the chant, the new one that came out the other day. Yeah. 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 It's, eh. I mean, it's neat, I guess, but you know, it's no way of all flesh. You know what I'm saying? Right. Sure. How much is? Oh, the other song is off that one so far, pretty good. Yeah. Good. Well, CK wants to know where I sit with Opeth. Um, to the left yeah like their older stuff is uh ridiculously amazing um but when they got what what album did they put put out like in the early like maybe 10 years ago 11 years ago saw, where they kind of went like older type of stuff I could, I don't like know. it sounds like the album was recorded in the 70s <clears throat> i kind of lost interest a little bit but obviously one of the more talented uh you know bands out there what was that album they did the ep with all like clean stuff on it it wasn't very like it wasn't heavy heavy i'm not sure i don't know the first album or maybe that was her second one jimmy what's your thoughts on uh emperor the band emperor. From Rodriguez chimed in the band emperor yeah uh i don't know i never really got into them like them and Bolt thrower and all those uh I don't know. Can you hear him loud enough? It's it's tough. Bolt speak? thrower and <laughs> uh they're okay. Damnation, yes. My friend Bill likes them a lot. His friend Bill likes them, in yeah. case anybody wanted to know what his friend <laughs> thought of. <laughs> Al Resh likes him too. <laughs> Al yeah. yeah, Al Resh. Bill Sullinger. Bill Sullinger. Huge headbanger. I just think that's such a you know some band names are so funny. Bolt thrower, like who just came into the room and is like, "Yo guys, I think we should be bolt thrower." What's your thoughts? And everyone's like, "Oh yeah, I agree." Yeah, dude. But it's it, think about it though. Like, it's so hard to think of a heavy metal band name nowadays that's not taken. You know, I remember when when we got signed, like we were thinking, should we change our name from Gizmachi to something? And, some bad ones. That's what I'm saying. We we've actually thought about it. Like we yeah. try to come up with other names, and it was like, well, we can't think of anything. We don't want to have that typical heavy metal name. It's like screw it. We'll just stick with Gizmachi and not have anybody think that you know <laughs> we're whatever. But I, I do remember, mm -hmm. and you mentioned Stain before, right? Right before we went to see, because we found out about them when they when they played with Limp Bizkit at the Chance. When they were still good. Yeah. Um, Stained played with them. Right. I was there. Yeah. And they were handing out the tapes or whatever. Literally, not long before that, maybe a week or two before, Chris Gilmore, the bass player from Gizmachi and I, we talked about changing the, the band Gizmachi to either Stain or Stained. <laughs> not even joking. And then we went and saw Limp Bizkit at the chance. Like, well, I guess that name's taken. <laughs> I guess we're going to stake his machi for now. <laughs> so that was even, what year was that? Like 98? 99? That was, yeah, was the summer of 98 going into 99. Yeah. So yeah. even back then, like we were thinking about changing his machi then. So, but here we are 45 years later and uh, we still have the same shitty band name. <laughs> I have a, I had a few names for, for bands, you know, like I thought like a great metal name would be like bust a nut, you oh know, my God, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Like now taking the stage, bust a nut. I, See, I, Jimmy I, and I, whenever we do the, uh, whenever we do something, it's like Morpheus descends the best name of all time. Yep. Yeah. And it's That's real good. Hey, everybody in the chat, if you were in a band or are in a band, 
list your band names in the chat, and I would like to uh, Quiet Lightning. Quiet Lightning. There's another one. We'll look up that video with the uh, title track. Uh, title track. Exactly. Suck the Devil's C O C K. It's an instrumental. Yeah. Instrumental jam. Where do I sit with Rush? One of my favorite bands ever. Um, Mancuda says Stained Limp Biscuit and Pearl Jam will be playing together at Jizzapalooza. Thank you, John, for that. I'll, I'll we'll be there front row with uh, like at a Gallagher concert with Gizmachi headlining. Yeah, Gizmachi though for that one. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Well, Thrash Metal says his band name was Odorous Urangus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Michael Carver says "Kill by Sundown." That's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool name. We got That's Witch cool. Hunter, Angel Ripper, Savage Beasts. Oh, you really, you really spent a long time coming up with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Altered, Beast. Altered Beast, yeah, yeah. Mutual Lines. There you go. One of the better uh, bands out of New York. Uh, mm. Tom Balls, <laughs> Burnt Orange, Tricky, Trick Day Nest. Jeannie mm. said "Suicide Lincoln." <laughs> What about Velvet Tones? The Boner Tones. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, your mom's checking in with you, asking if you're having fun. Yes. If he wasn't having fun, he wouldn't be sitting there. That is true. He'd have came up like, all right, I, I'm going back downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Cheech says Slick Toxic. Oh, Thrash Metal. Thrash Metal, these, how many bands were you in? He says Priestiality is another one. <laughs> Priestiality. It's a pretty good one. Priestiality, that's just wrong. Bone for the bone. Remember that? Uh, the dead stiffness. Um, we got what? Bucket Wasser, Gooch Punch, Uncle Steve, and the Bad <laughs> Touch Trio. <laughs> Hentai Tentacle Gangbang. Okay. <laughs> Gooch Punch. <laughs> um. Jay and Boner Jams recap their top 10 lists. I was an hour late. I don't have a top 10 list because I wasn't prepared for tonight's show. Boner Jams, before we go, because we still have a few minutes left. So before we leave tonight, mm -hmm. Boner Jams will recap his top 10 in the Micro Machine Man voice. I will. <laughs> I'll do it real fast, yeah. Um, well, since what, it's 928, make sure everyone in the chat hit the thumbs up, please. We have a few thousand watching right now, so thank you for checking in. Make sure you subscribe to the Johnny Bean channel if you haven't. I don't know what you're doing, but come on, make some moves. Yeah, and tell your uh, friends share share these videos out there. I know you know uh, when you share them on Facebook, it doesn't get much action, Jackson, because Facebook and YouTube don't get along. But do it anyway. Um, tell your friends about this stuff because hey, it's fun. And look who we have behind us tonight. I can't believe it. Where's Cedric Diggory? Where do you go? I don't know who that is. Uh, what's his face? Uh, your, your cutout that was at your wedding. Um, what's oh, he's uh, – you can see his – Oh, there he is. Yeah. Okay. What kind yep. of desk is that, by the way? Is that new? Yeah, you like that? That's my workbench that I set up guitars. Not really. Um, oh. Yeah. Meant to lift yeah. weights on. Can you see – hold on. Let me see if we can – The ESP LTD? <laughs> yeah, Steve yeah, Carmichael yeah, 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 with Afterbirth. That's hey, is this angle good? It's the it's the Brian Bosom forehead angle. <laughs> not not red enough though. You gotta be the color of the wall. You slap my balls off, it'll make it. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. There we go. And um. Uh, <laughs> Before we get to our, our, our next topic, um, for um, one of my best friends, Trick Day Nast is here, so I want him to see my new seven string. It's an Ibanez R two D two reverse headstock, which is awesome. Ibanez has the coolest headstock regularly, and it's uh, even better in reverse. It's better than that Kiesel one. That was sent to you. Well, anything's better than that shit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, pretty cool. It's tuned to uh, tune down a step tricky. It's tuned to. 
and uh, yeah, I need some work. And I, I brought some the my new strings, and I wanted Jay's thoughts on. What we got here. Ten to what is it? Ten to fifty nine. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that would be good. That's extended scale. Plus, it's tuned down a step, right? Yeah, you'll be oh. you'll you should be good with that. Because on your seven string, you're at fifty six, right? Yep. But stock, they don't come with fifty six. They come with uh fifty four. They used to be fifty twos on like the universe, right? But I think they wised up because if you tuned it any anywhere normal, it would be like down, you know. Right. What was the last trim factory album? The Nexus? Yes. You know, you use like thinner than nine strings on the album with the extended uh, scale guitar. How? 54s to whatever. I swear to God. 54? Let me see if you can see how thin the neck is. Yeah, we might have the same. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Let's compare necks. Let's compare them. Your, yours might be thinner. Yours is thinner than mine, I think. It's pretty thin. That's what she said. <laughs> it's good. Is this show sponsored by Ivan, as somebody said before? I wish it was. And I still have this. Yep. I tried. I tried. You got you to gotta have to have some luthier or somebody just cut one out for you. It shouldn't be that difficult. Somebody can do it. Yeah. Um, and um, here, and I bought some. Um, what are those? 11 to 52. Yeah. So this for, um, I did two of these for my Jazz Master. And the other Jazz Master should be here, but it's not. Man, man. Jazz Master. Yeah. <laughs> jazz Master, it's not here. So it's um I wanted to have both and those these will be the only two guitars that'll have the same tuning. Unlike Jay, that has every guitar tuned the same. Scheduled delivery pending. No scheduled delivery. <laughs> Sweet. I'm telling you, it's it's lost. Somebody somebody's playing a jazz master right now. Like, yo, this thing is hot, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> How does that happen? It was a, literally a week ago, right? And now oh. it's not even here. So I was gonna put um, put both, just tune them the same way, drop B, and then um, just to see how they feel. Cause I want to have comparable strings, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then um, Ashley Moore, hers hers are the thickest. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Tricky, Tricky's like you, Jay. He he likes to have his all stuff tuned standard. So Tricky. you guys you guys chat. Who's tricky? Uh, Nick Tricano is in the chat. Oh, nine and a half he has on his. Um, is Boner Jams in Gizmachi? No, but he might as well be. He uh, <laughs> he played on he played a couple parts on the album, and uh, I'll I'll say this without saying too much. Um, if it wasn't for Brian, uh, this album wouldn't probably wouldn't even be out still, <laughs> and it wouldn't be what it is. So I'll leave I'll leave it at that. Thanks. We should have renamed the album Boner Jams. <laughs> BPB. So be um before we finish up tonight. I can't tell if you're blushing or or if you're just really red. <laughs> what is oh you're you're okay. I had um one more <laughs> yeah, a suitcase of plutonium next to you. It's melting it's your face off. <laughs> I had one more list for tonight. Oh did, did you see the, uh, the other thing I sent you for tonight's show? What is the – I saw it, but I didn't look at it, or I looked at it, but I didn't see it. Yeah, five, I looked at it, but I didn't, didn't see it. Five bonus tracks. B-sides, soundtrack. Give me the goods. What was the question? The top five bonus tracks, B-sides, or songs off a of soundtrack that's not on an album. Give me the goods, Jimmy. Go ahead. Does that count, Jay? Wait, is it from the 2000s or ever, forever? Ever. Whatever you want. Prince, the, for the Prince, the Japanese version, the Japanese version of uh, Injustice for All, one of the best songs they ever did. The Prince from Metallica. Well, that's on an album, right? It's uh, a I. Besides album, Brad Tracks, right? 
right? Oh yeah, rare tracks from Meshuggah. Has a whole album full of them. Yeah. Um. What about oh. 99 Ways to Die from Megadeth, Sean? And, and Angry Again from Megadeth. Now, now the show's starting, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and Diagems, also the same uh, Demon Knight, right? Soundtrack? Wait, that's the... Uh, no, that's, uh, that's um, Secret Place. Secret Place. Yo, Megadeth had some bangers that weren't on albums. They were. They definitely did. Oh, that was the... Um, what was the Slayer song that was on the TNA soundtrack or whatever? Or the WCW thing? Here comes the pain. Yeah, that's an awesome, that's that's an awesome song. <laughs> yep. Obviously, you got Van Halen talking about humans being Thomas Lorino teething by Deftones. Great song. That's off the Crow Two soundtrack. And what about there was a Corn song off of the Crow One? No, Crow Crow Two soundtrack as well. That's that's actually my number one song. You son of a bitch. They do love and trust from Pearl Jam off a uh, single. Oh, Birth Ritual from Soundgarden. One of their best songs. Oh yeah, good call. Great song. Who, who's the kid off camera? So <laughs> That's Jay's son, J Jimmy Hannon. It's my drummer slash brother-in-law slash landscaper slash plumber. Yeah, cool. Jimmy. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so everyone in the chat, give a uh, five top B-sides, bonus songs, soundtrack songs that are not on – an album, so I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with mine. So we already, five, we already covered all the we already all got the, good ones, the best. No, no, oh, you, yeah, you we missed some songs. What's we'll the judge well, of that? What's that? <laughs> we'll we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> all right, so uh, number five, it's actually three songs, but I couldn't. I, I had to put them all together. Uh, Slipknot, All Out Life, Override, and Scream. I have no Those idea songs, what any of those songs are. They're the shit. That's what that's what they are. Check them out. Um, number four, Black Rain by uh, Soundgarden. Mm. Yeah, have you listened to that song? Uh, maybe right. I'd have to hear it. Jimmy, it's all right. That's all right. <laughs> um, Dead Souls by Nine Inch Nails off the first Crow soundtrack. I'd that, have to listen to that too. I don't know. That's the that's the song like when um, Brandon Lee is <laughs> running on top of the buildings. It's like that. It's a it's a Cure cover, actually. It's a great song. Well, if it's a Cure cover, it's probably not a good song. <laughs> it's probably better than the original. And then uh, number two, I have "Immortally Insane" by Pantera. I know that song. Yeah, because I sent it to you, and you're like, "Yo, that song's a shit." I'm like, "I know. That's why I sent it to you." Okay. <laughs> well, there are some other songs that you sent me that aren't the shit. So, Yo, Jay, check this song out. Yo, did you check that song out? <laughs> I know. I like. I stalk Jay. For everyone who, who doesn't know, I'll send Jay something. Like, what'd you think? I didn't check it out yet, and I'll be like, "What'd you think now?" I just keep. I'll keep asking him. I'll, I won't let it go. And then the phone will ring. I'm like shit, Brian wants to know what I think of that song. How about Johnny? Will know this one, and Jimmy too. Winner take all from Sammy Hagar yeah. on oh. the Over the Top soundtrack. That's the that's, you know, that's all. Yeah. That's the best song that Hagar did with with uh, with Edward. It's a good one, man. That's a great tune, and it has Eddie does the the bass solo in the in the middle. Yep, and uh, Sammy beats uh, Stallone in arm wrestling. Yeah, in the video, the music video. Is it raining out, or is that? <laughs> That's my air conditioner. That's why I can't record drums up here because if the air turns on. Oh yeah, that's a bidet at work, and then um, <laughs> yeah, that's the bidet. It's so <laughs> loud and so powerful. Oh, no easy way. Robert Tepper, that's another banger. Rocky Four, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, number one I have is uh, Sean Olson by Corn. Off. Oh, of somebody mentioned that in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that song is the shit. That was that's a B side off of the first album, the self titled. Is it? Yeah. They had to cut that. They had to cut a song, and they cut that. They cut that song. That should be on the album. That song is fantastic. There's a so what thorns may grow. Um, stabbing the drama. That's like the thirteenth song they put on there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Now, there well, are some good ones, man. Would you have any other ones, Jay? Not that I could really think of. Um, I don't know. Um, here. We covered Metallica. We covered Megadeth. Well, does does Garage Days count as a? Uh, I guess it's the album, though, right? 
Doesn't yeah. Have a B side, even though they're yeah. covers. Well, it's our list. You can do whatever you want if you want to include it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. That's a good album. That's all. All the songs in there. It is. You're right, CK. Sometimes, well, a lot of times, B sides are better than the album tracks. True. It's true. I don't know who's the one cutting them. Like they should have the band, like the fans. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> cutting some of these songs. What was that movie? Uh, I can't remember. Nelson well, Rodriguez says "Ministry Burning Inside." I, I don't know that one. Maybe if I heard it, I would. I'm not sure. What do you um? What do you guys think of the new? Uh, Fear Factory joint. I thought it was um, very underwhelming considering it's the first song from the new album. Um, it kind of, it's, it's all right. That's the thing. It's all right. It's not they usually um, you know, the first song you release from an album should kind of uh, make you want to keep listening to it and like, oh man, I can't, really can't wait to hear the rest of it. And with this song, it was kind of like, yeah, it's cool, but it didn't really do much for me, you know? Jimmy? I liked it. It seemed like it was, you know... Uh, it seemed like it was, you know... The extra song of Genesis. The extra song of Genesis. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. That drummer's the ship, by that, the way. That drummer's the ship, by the way. And uh, Matt, uh, Thrash Metal and Fun Riffs, what's you guys' thoughts on the announcement of Mudvayne's reunion? Oh, very cool. Um, I'd like to know. I mean, maybe they already announced what they're going to do, but I should probably look up on that. But um, I do know that those guys are fans of us, which is neat. Not me and Brian, um, <laughs> but Giz <laughs> Gizmachi. <laughs> um, they, uh, there's actually a picture from OzFest in, in 05 with uh, Chad, the singer, wearing a um, Gizmachi shirt, which was cool. So... Yeah, I'd like to uh, hear more of what they're going to be doing. Remember Mike Rafferty? What about him? He called me a month ago. I guess his brother's going to like tech for them. He told me this a month ago. I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> now it's oh, like, yeah. so Jimmy got the lowdown a month ago that yeah. this was happening. Didn't he didn't believe it. He thought the guy telling him it was full of shit. Yeah. <laughs> and if you would have called me and told me who told you, I would be like, yeah, he's full of shit. <laughs> I would have thought the same thing. Bread fan and Stone Cold Crazy were B sides to Metallica singles. Bread fan, Shit. hell yeah, Bread fan, man, hell yeah, Bread fan's great. Yep, the the solo in Bread fan though it sounds like me. Yo, <laughs> yeah. it sounds like he's sounds like he's playing an out of tune guitar. Lefty. Yeah. <laughs> hey Kirk, you want to play? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe not. So we'll just slap anything up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, well, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Do my homework, man. <laughs> Um, what is that? Should we read this on the air? Let's see. No, <laughs> can't read it on the air. Is it from the? Uh... It's got uh, some pertinent information on there. We can't can't share it. Okay. Is it? Oh, I saw the um, text from Balls about our the CDs. I'll have to look at that in a minute. Um. Yeah, Tom says, hopefully it sounds more like the first two albums. CK says, Kirk's not the best guitar player to be kind. No, I get it. But he's awesome. But it's at, at the same time, you know, it, it's just, it works in Metallica. I mean, you can say what you want about, and I, I agree with a lot of it. You know, his vibrato is not very good. His, he sounds like he's squeezing the hell out of the, out of the, out of the fretboard sometimes or the neck. But some of those solos that he, that he wrote, in, in a lot of those songs are amazing solos. Yeah, absolutely. Robot Master Switch asks, have I listened to Killer Be Killed? Absolutely. Um, if you go back to the uh, December show, that, um, the last Killer Be Killed album was one of my top five or top 10 albums of the year. It's a great album. They have? Two. Two. Oh. It's good. They're real good. I haven't heard the second one didn't I answer this question before? I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to mention this band again. <laughs> Greta Van Fleet. What's my take? I don't like them. <laughs> to be kind. <laughs> to be. <laughs> and Trick Day Nasty, you're right? Kirk is a legend. Let's be real. Agreed. Yeah. And um, my, my favorite Metallica lineup is 
you know, Nick Benza. <laughs> Nick, what? Is uh, like the, you know, the Newstead version of Metallica. And I know everybody, some people are like, oh my God, Cliff Burton. I get it. And I think that if, if Cliff, you know, if that tragedy wouldn't have happened, Metallica definitely wouldn't have taken that huge left turn to the black record, right turn, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> um, I think, you know, because I, I believe when you watch some of those interviews around the around the uh, Master of Puppets era, you know, there's one in particular that I always think of where it's Hetfield and uh, what? Nothing. Hetfield and Burton sitting there being interviewed and Hetfield's kind of taking a back seat like Cliff Burton's doing all the talk and kind of telling like, you know, we're, we do what we do and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's basically like we're just we're going to do what we do. And we're going to kick people's asses and they don't care what, what else is going to happen with anything else. And I think that if, if, if he wouldn't have passed away, you know, I don't think the, the huge direction change wouldn't have happened to Metallica. I love the black album. It's my third favorite Metallica album, but I don't think that album would have even happened uh, if Cliff Burton wouldn't have passed away. Right. And Mr. Hellstorm saying Cliff Cliff would have left the band. Yeah, if they won't went ahead and did all that. But the funny thing is, is I believe it's in Scott Ian's book that because they did a tour or maybe they were hanging out or something during the Master of Puppets tour. Scott Ian was hanging out with Cliff Burton. And, and it was either Cliff or Kirk. I think Cliff told it was Cliff and Kirk with Scott Ian about yeah. looking to fire Lars. Yeah, they said when we get home from, from this tour, He's we're done. gonna we're gonna get a new drummer. We're gonna fire fire Lars. Yep. Now, could you imagine? Not only, you know, would you would they have a new drummer, but Cliff would have been in there still. And but at the same time, almost the same with with Kirk. Like, say what you want about Lars is drumming, but you know they're very open about the structure. You know, like he kind of puts these songs together and always has. You know, Hetfield to come up with the riffs, but then you know. Lars would always kind of like, okay, we'll do this. We'll put the tail on the end of the riff. Like he has a lot to do with the structure of those songs. And also, again, say what you want about his drumming. And Jimmy can play so much amazing hard stuff on drums, but there's still something about playing those Metallica songs that's just fun. They're awesome. Right? They're just fun to play. They're very simple, but they're just fun. There's something about playing those drum beats. And I'm not a drummer, but they're fun to play on drums. And Shane, so, Wilson, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, if you would have put, you know, Dave Lombardo or something, or Paul, Paul Bostaff, Paul <laughs> Bostaff in Metallica, it might not have worked. Like, who knows? Like, remember when Joey Jordison? When Joey Jordison filled in for Lars Spare. when he was sick. No, yeah, all those. I'm saying when he filled in for Corn, like Brian would especially know. It's like cool, but it's weird because yeah. Joey Jordan's obviously better, but with Corn, David Silvera was. Yeah. The, yeah. The chemistry is kind of what we're, what I guess. Even now, Corn's new drummer is phenomenal, but like. Yeah, Corn's new drummer say, is a great drummer, but he's not. Usually, it doesn't. To me, it's not as good a fit as David was. Yeah. Um, and Corn's new drummer uh, drummed for David Lee Roth. There you go, Johnny Bean. Bring it back to Van Halen, guys. Yeah, he's he's yeah. he's a phenomenal drummer. Yeah. But it's still just not the same. Not the same, you know. It's some. It's about chemistry and just certain things you put together, you know. And have you heard David Silveri's a new band? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's called like Bias, right? Something. It's called Core 10 or something? Like, <laughs> Corn 10. It's so weird. It's bad. It's so weird. It's real bad. I, I've received 31 individual text messages to go over my list again of the top albums of the 2000s. 2000s. All right, do it real quick and then we'll, and then we'll, uh, we'll end it. Yeah. So CK, here you go, buddy. Number 10 was uh, Animosity by Seven Dust. Number 9 is Ashes of the Wake by Lamb of God. Number 8, Waking the Fallen by Event Sevenfold. 7, Shogun by Trivium. Uh, 6 is White Pony by the Deftones. Number 5 is Omega Collide from the one and only Gizmachi. Hey, we made the top 5. Number 4, Iowa by Slipknot. 3, Leviathan, Macedon. The number 2, The Way of All Flesh. Gojira and number one, volume three, the subliminal versus slip. Oh. There you go. Oh, 
The English, this English journalist said he knew there was headbutting between Lars and Cliff, and Lars wanted control, but Cliff and James were such good friends that it would have been way different. <laughs> so that's this thing you never know. Yeah. Justice wouldn't have came out. Probably. Yeah, Justice wouldn't have came out, and there would have, there would have been bass guitar in it. Um, well, thrash metal asks, did you hear about the baby accidentally named corn? And I know Brian, you were pumped when, uh, Hell yeah. when I sent you that link. That's awesome. Yep. Yep. CK. Yeah. Two from the knot. Got it. Yeah. Nobody really knows, uh, that, you know, Brian's son, Brody, he was close, this close to being called corn. <laughs> it's true. The, uh, well, before we finish the show tonight, uh, Jimmy, do you have a couple yeah, songs Jimmy. you would like um, the, the listening audience? We have 5,000 listening currently waiting to hear what songs do you recommend? A little homework for everyone. A couple songs you got for everyone to check or, out. Or album. The... Album songs. Uh, records. What did I say before? Oh, Magic Spider from Necrogoblicon. Magic Spider from Necrogoblicon. Can you spell Necrogoblicon? <laughs> N E K R O. And then figure and <laughs> figure the rest out. Yes. Goblicon. Necro Goblicon. <laughs> um, for Stab Boon from Necrophagist is a good one to listen to. to Necro what? Necromancer? Necrophagist. Uh, oh, um Midnight Love Supply from Night Flight Orchestra. What's that song called? Midnight Stilettos? Midnight Love Supply. I think that's what it's called. All right, check out Midnight Love Supply from Night Flight Orchestra. Good song. And, yeah, Stiletto from Night Flight. Also a banger. Now, if you listen to Stiletto from Night Flight Orchestra, be prepared for it to be in your head for, like, five days. Lovers in the Rain, also a good song from, from them. Can Jay please list his top five from the last 20 years? We'll be here forever. I, I didn't – like I said before, I didn't really do any um any homework on this, and I apologize. But uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, Trick they asked, "Cut you with a linoleum knife" by Macedon is the best B side ever. It's a good song. Uh, best. Don't, I don't know, but no. what? What's the song we were talking about the other night? Benny Mardonis. What was the name of that song? What? The song. Um, she's only sixteen years old. Oh. What something? What the hell is that called? It's an eighty song. That song was awesome. The hell is it? Benny Mardonis. Some, oh, something into the night, into the night. <laughs> John Biel. Yeah. John Biel. Is he here? Is John Biel watching? John Bull? No. Oh. Okay. No. Oh, Jay, what do you have? A couple songs you want everyone to listen to? What have I been listening to? Let me peep my um, recent listens. Listening to a lot of 80s. A lot of 80s. Um, crap. Is there anything heavy on here? No, no. I've been listening to Nothing from Meshuggah. That's on here. Um, got some ACDC on here. Chaos Sphere, Meshuggah, Meshuggah, Meshuggah. Larry Mitchell. Um, there's not really anything too heavy on here besides Meshuggah. Beach Street from uh, the Beach, Beach Street Breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> New York, New York. B -b 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 Jay, check out the uh, no, no from Mancuda. What are the lyrics again for the song he wants to know? What? As you're checking that out, Robot Master Switch, uh, New Cannibal Corpse. I, I don't love Cannibal Corpse. I don't. When you start talking about like fire up the chainsaw, like I just can't get into that. Like I'm not cutting a tree down or killing someone, so it's not. I don't know. I just I just. Oh yeah, that's on that's on my uh, playlist. My recently played. Bloodthirst. No, well, Bloodthirst is I think their best album. Gallery of Suicide. Uh, that's blood. What which one is the? Uh, which one is the one for? Uh, no, yeah, that was good. What's the Gallery one with the um? What's the one with um, Ace Ventura? Oh, that's Hammer Smash Face. Yeah, that sounds shit too. <laughs> <laughs> Gallery of 
<laughs> we might have a guest, another guest, a special oh. guest. Oh, my brother, he said my brother in law was asking about a song. Yeah, some song about a 14 or 15 year old girl or something. Benny Mardones. Benny Mardones is one of the songwriters. Into the Night, into the night or something. Jimmy's into all those type of songs. Um. <laughs> all right, so before we go. Whoa. Whoa. Hi, guys. What's up? Hey, you're on the metal show now, Ellie. Johnny's not even here. It's Uncle Brian. What's up, BV? Oh, BVH. Ellie Vi, how are you? <laughs> oh, well. Do you want to use these sticks? Ellie, you all right? <laughs> anyway. Hi, Ellie. <gasps> oh! Holy <laughs> 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 smoke. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's awesome. Good job. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to end the show everybody subscribe <laughs> tell everybody about these shows the channel everyone um, make sure you hit the thumbs subscribe drop super chat for jimmy's beard oil we gotta help him out guys Come on. look at him Fresh. yeah i think it's 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 more red than it was uh an hour and a half ago yeah my melanoma is just Bumping right now. I've been drinking water and Gatorade just to rehydrate after my seven minutes outside today. It's awful. All right. I'll try not to get – if I play this acoustically, it's not going to get flagged, right? Yeah. Oh, here's, here's Ellie. Megatron. Ellie. What, who's this? You hear that? Hell yeah. Did you hear that? I did. Play two chords from a song, and she knows it's Metallica. <laughs> you like this nonchalant too, doing something Metallica. Give me something complicated <laughs> next time, Dad. Absolutely. So, um, right sake. yeah, I'm, right, gonna, I'm gonna give my uh, two songs. I want everyone to check oh, out. Okay, I'll mute it so you can't hear this racket behind me. Um, we were talking about Far Beyond Driven earlier. I've been listening to Throws of Rejection a lot lately. I, that song is the shit. Check that out. And uh, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay. Pantera. If you've not listened to "Immortally Insane," which is a B-side off of "Reinventing the Steel," check it out. It's a shit. Great song. That's all. That's all I got for you guys tonight. Until next month. Until the next end of month. May. What's the uh, What's gonna be the date on that one? It's uh, the last Wednesday in May. So it's the the twenty sixth. The 26th. Okay, May 26th, we'll see everybody back. But I will see everybody Friday. Friday night. <laughs> With Johnny Bean. With Johnny Bean. Uh, and then we'll be talking Van Halen and, and other stuff. Probably what we ate during the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Saturday night, we got Saturday Night Live with John B.L. Your, your host, John Bull. Yes, there he is, top right corner there. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Tap, maybe tapping into that kernel's a little too much lately. <laughs> and then on Tuesdays, and then Tuesdays we have the uh, metal. What is it? Talking guitars and eighties metal live with John Mancuda, who's in the chat, I believe, still. Yep, he's there. And Neander Paul. And Johnny is there sometimes. Yeah, once in a while. Once in a while, John. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so we have we literally have something for everybody on this channel. We got the metal heads at the end of the month. We got the 80s rock and metal stuff Tuesdays. We got the Van Halen related stuff Fridays. And then Saturday is just pandemonium. We talk about anything and everything. <laughs> Can you hear Jimmy peeing in there? Can you hear Ellie hitting the cup? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. Is that loud on your end? No.
Okay. No. 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 <laughs> 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 At least you awesome. put your headphones on. That's good. Ellie, our daddy doesn't have headphones. So everyone, make sure you check out all the shows on the John B Network. Ellie, check this out. And uh, Johnny, do you want to uh, bring up? <laughs> awesome. Thank you to our channel members. <laughs> We have uh, four thousand of them. I'll br- I'll just you know we've been neglecting them, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hit them up real quick. Chuck Green, Tony Fruitcake, the Captain, Mike Smith, David Ennis, Mike Neese, Dick Poole, Lenny Lou and Mary, Garguts Entertainment, Kurt Fifty One Fifty, KXM Rock, Arhabs, Will Starr, Steve Franklin, Wayno, Sean Bolin, Nicole Morazic, Joe Christian, Mickey Settlemeyer. Sue Silvestri, David Shea Gamori, Bo Zeke, <laughs> Crazy Cox 678, Carol Hatcher, False Flag, Marcus Scranton, Sean Silas, Julia Baldessari, and Jarhead Rock for page one. And then we got page two, Hal Face, Johnny Moronic, James Gum, Hillary Lewis, good old Jim Nichols, Nicholas, uh, 802 Blues, Mr. BHB Jr., Frack 5150, Pal Guitars, Dan Halen, Frank Corcoran, Bent Tom, Two Brain Cells, The Chad, Rick Green, Six Chick 71, Robot Master Switch, Fernando Riley, R2R3, Locking Nut, Jeff T, Thomas Santiago, Voodoo Childs J, The Man, The Myth, The Legend, Brian Spaulding, Laguna Beach, Laguna Palms, Fender Guru, Music Therapy Laz, Go- Ghost BC Rich, 5150 TV, Jimmy Ray Hawkins, Hugh Caldwell, Crosby is a, and Jesus Ray, <laughs> <laughs> Randy Price, Steve Carmichael. Steve Carmichael! And Michael B. Where, oh, I miss Michael B. I'm sorry, Michael B. I still love you. Hell yeah. Guys, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Johnny, as always, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, in the chat. <laughs> Party yeah, at Jay's. Definitely. <laughs> All right, everyone. See you Friday. Yeah. Yeah. When you lose late, we got to start over. Yeah. <laughs> Let's turn it all over again. Oh my God. Plug in. Back in.